finally we came towards the forts uh, explanation part so forts of goa so we actually went over a small part over there and the fort of goa is filled with a bunch of mountains okay, you can see from here yeah so this is what they were talking about that goa is a bunch of uh, you know mountains so true it out so it's got na good natural defenses against you know almost anything and uh, seaborne trade was very big in 15th 16th century so ports gained importance goa having you know been the landing point of all the portuguese they came and started to build their seaborne empire over here and uh, they started to build forts this is one of the few existing forts over a very long period of time and uh, aguda fort used to hold a lot of water a chapel a bunch of natural spring springs it had an underground tank apparently and uh, they also had a lighthouse and lots of stuff this is store a bunch of stuff they had cannons also Whoa, were further inland their cannons had limited range though that ships anchored far on the north of the river mandovi and uh, beyond the range of the cannons of both of these forts so the portuguese could not dislodge them shot at this gap where defenses they took to building two more forts at marmago fort the mouth of the river zwari and aguda fort so i'm actually reading it out from this point over here right and uh, it's a nice place and this these are a few pictures this is about a decline of forts so once aerial warfare became the norm forts lost all of their strategic importance they fell into disarray so the archaeological survey of india has um, demarcated this as one of the few existing fort fortified structures as a archaeological site yeah that's the story of forts